What do you eat, sleep, or breathe? Sharon Hornhouse, I'm here today with our 1,465th day of What You Have To Now, documenting the business journey. I used to say, and I still sometimes do say, online business journey, because that's why I originally started this segment in 2018, I think I started doing this. I'd have to go back to look to the exact day. I don't think it was January 1st, but whenever, it was in 2018. I've been doing it for a long time. Whatever 1,464 days ago is, because there are 66 days ago is, because I missed one day, and today's 65. So I haven't done that math, haven't gone back to look. But I did go back and watch that video, which was a, I mean, as, as rambly and weird as I am now, it, this is me. Uh, that was, oh, so bad, so bad, so bad, so bad. So today, my question for you is, what do you eat, sleep, and breathe? Our idiom for supersize your business was to eat, sleep, and breathe something. It's one that's been around since about the 14th century or the 1400s. And it, it's hard to know exactly and find the exact origin of it. It's searching on the internet because that's how I do research. Uh, you know, the internet isn't it, as amazing a source of information it is. It's skewed information. And so we can't always find what we're looking for. And I look for a diverse array of stuff just with respect to doing these idioms. So the stuff that I get shown, it's it's sometimes you have to dig through hundreds and hundreds of pages to actually get at the origin of it. And to be honest, I'm not gonna do that much work for it because it's just my way of finding out what things mean, looking at them and saying, well, how would this or could this impact my business and your business and the business that we're trying to grow and create here in the world. That's the whole purpose of that particular piece. And to remind us that we get to decide what everything means, right? When I look at this particular idiom or any other idiom, I'm looking at it and the question I'm asking myself is, okay, I understand what they say it means as a definition, just like if you're looking up a word in the dictionary. Well, what does that mean to me? And our topic today and this month for the annual challenge, BU 365 Day Challenge, to do one thing every day that improves us, is all about emotions, this segment. I'm calling it a segment instead of a month because I think I'm going to make it evergreen and turn each segment into 30 days uh, down the road. I, I don't know exactly. You know, the first month of the year is 31 days. So there's already 31 days with respect to physical, emotional. It's not a leap year, so we'll have 28 days for emotion. So then do I add 29, 30, 31? Maybe each month will be, th or each segment will be 31 days. I could do that. Uh, but I don't want to do crossover in the annual challenge. This is to maybe do something with it in the future or to make it evergreen so people can hop in any time. Because it doesn't matter if we talk about physical or emotional or any, it doesn't matter what order we talk about them in. What matters is that we cover all the areas and aspects of our life as we're uh, examining it and, and continually improving and becoming the better version of ourselves all the time. You know, it's not like we get done. It's not like we decide this is who I am and we're ultimately who we're going to be and we never change after that. We are all absolutely positively continuous works in progress. We're always changing and evolving and growing, just like everything around us is always changing and evolving and growing. And it's either growing or it's, it's uh, deteriorating, right? So I say let's be continually growing and evolving in, in the direction we want versus deteriorating and having things go south and not the way we want. Although most of us would like to go south in the winter. So eat, sleep, and breathe something. What is something that you're so interested in that you would eat, sleep, and breathe it? Um, we all have things that we love and are interested in. And we're just interested in them because we're interested in them. We're all different and unique. And so we're interested in them. I love cooking. So I'm interested in recipes and cooking and things like that. I don't cook a lot anymore, but I was one of those kids that used to like read cookbooks after school. And then I would create and make up my own recipes and make up my own stuff. I'd, I'd combine things and experiment with them and find out what tasted good and what didn't. Were some of them a complete flop and failure? And my family looked at me cross-eyed and said, really, you're gonna try to expect us to eat that? Absolutely, but were some of them amazing and awesome, yes. And so there were more amazing and awesome ones, which gave me a foundation and a love for cooking. So I don't eat, sleep, and breathe cooking, but I, lo I love cooking. There are things that people eat, sleep, and breathe. Think about when you first fall in love. Uh, you tend to eat, sleep, and breathe one another until you get more comfortable with your relationship, etc. Or you break up, whatever. Uh, we eat, sleep, and breathe different sports, different actors and actresses or famous people. Some of us are very, you know, are, are members of a fan club. I am not, but some people are. Uh, 
We eat, sleep, and breathe different hobbies or different topics that we're really interested in. I love reading books on different topics, mostly business books. I'm, I'm admitted I'm pretty uh, nonfiction focused when it comes to my reading, but I also love great works of literature and great um, great writing in different genres. So I, I love to read and it's you know more challenging these days than it ever used to be before, but books are available on audio. Which I, it's like watching a movie. I, I prefer the book over the movie. I prefer the book over the audio because we get to put our own pictures and our own imagination into the book versus having it uh, it's shown to us. You know, it's kind of like the shortcut version. We don't have to think as much. Um, and I, I personally like to think more, not less. So eat, sleep, eat, and breathe something. I would love if you would share in the comments below something that you are really, really interested in. It can be anything that you eat, sleep, and breathe, and, and that's how interested you are. And it just means we're super interested in something. But I shared for Super Size Your Business five different ways and five different things that we want to be really in all in on in order to supersize and grow our business. And, and that's how I interpret it eat, sleep, and breathe something, right? How someone else hears eat, sleep, and breathe something, they might in, interpret that as a, a bad thing that you're, you know, you're overworking and it's too hard, whatever. I mean, like I said, we all get to define everything. For emotions, for our annual challenge today, we're talking about emotions. And today we talked about, hey, we're first and foremost emotional beings. Talk, talk about the difference between emotions and feelings and, you know, thoughts will come down the road from that because our thoughts people get and it does happen so fast sometimes it's confusing we think that we're these rational thought-based beings and it's it's just the opposite we're actually emotional physical beings first then our feelings come in because our feelings are the thoughts we have at a subconscious level about our emotions because our, our body senses things and our, our mind and our spirit sense things and that immediately turns into emotions. And then the emotions get translated by our feelings. And then after all that, if it needs to go to our conscious mind, then we start actually thinking about it on a conscious level and making objective choices about something. So that doesn't come into play until number one, do we need, we our body decides if we need to do something in, in our subconscious to get to be safe. If we have a a feeling in our stomach that we're in danger and we're afraid of something at a subconscious level we, we will our body will pick up signals we'll sense that you know and our senses will pick up signals we'll emotionally feel fear and then we'll well we'll we'll sense the fear the different fear things that in our body are messages physical messages that then hit our subconscious and we get a feeling of being afraid or we're in fear and then if it's a flight or fight, fight or flight, we have to do something and think to run away, then we actually consciously will think and then we run we run away and then we think about how we ran away because we were afraid of something, if that makes sense. I'm not sure I'm explaining it well, but that's how we work as humans. Even the, the ancient Greeks knew that you could convince people to do something based on their feelings and their emotions alone. You didn't have to have a logical reason for it. Uh, and that, like anything else, can be used for good or evil, right? Look at uh, the media these days and politicians, how they're, you know, taking fear and they're using fear to, to get us to do things, make different decisions, make choices or not do things, right? This whole COVID thing has been one big, massive fear manipulation on the part of politicians and media. And it's really quite disturbing if you step back and look at it. And, some of us, we just choose not to participate, right? We're like, yeah, not watching your media, not listening to your big social media companies, just not going to participate in that. Now, <coughs> you might say, but Sharon, this is Facebook Live, or this is YouTube, or wherever you happen to be hearing or seeing me. Uh, but the truth is, I use the tools to create my content and my things I want to talk about and the impact I want to have on the world. And then I get the heck off them. I don't spend all day scrolling or watching the news or the media. I learned a long time ago, back in the 1980s, that I needed to turn those things off and decide on a conscious level what I wanted to feed my brain. Otherwise, guess what? We're subconsciously being programmed all the time. 
by our environment, by the things that are just playing in the background. So what do I do? I choose what I'm going to have playing in my background. I play in the background now. It used to drive my kids nuts, but a lot of times I would have meditations and and affirmations and and you know subliminal different beats and uh, things playing in the background of my house when the kids were growing up because it had a positive impact on me versus if you've got you know the media or TV or negative shows playing in the background while you're doing other things you know that's why I stopped I actually consciously stopped and I loved music growing up right I used to eat sleep and breathe music when I was in high school and I had literally when I went to college thousands I had tubs and tubs of albums back when they had record albums and cassette tapes because we had cassettes then and uh, I had like just an obscene amount of music and after I, in, in, I went to corporate America and learned about the impact that different things have on our our mind and our thinking and our conscious and subconscious I just stopped listening to the radio I started listening to things that I wanted to feed my mind when I was in my car and when I was driving to and from work etc and uh, it, I think it made a huge difference on me and my life and my outlook on life uh, we get to choose all of that and and that's mostly by what we choose to and not to be a part of or participate in or let influence us now I'm like everybody else every once in a while I like to binge watch something on some movie or some show on now we've got all these streaming medias but we didn't used to um, and you know I have fond memories of watching on Friday nights with my parents uh, was the show Miami Vice we used to watch Miami Vice every Friday night but that was again before corporate America and I learned that I need to pay attention to what I let into my life and, and who I let into my life and and things like that all right I'm rambling so I'm gonna go I have got a busy busy schedule today so if you need help ask I will get to you when I can uh, otherwise go out make it an awesome day see you tomorrow